My name is Sundari Maharaj Ajim. I was born on the 29th of October, 1943. I got a nickname of Cindy when I went to high school at the age of 13 by my friend Joy. My parents, their names were Mahadev Maharaj and my mother, Sande Maharaj. My mother was 15 years of age when she married my dad, who was 25 years old. They had together 13 children, 10 of which grew up to be adults, all grown with families of their own. Uncle Davy was born to my mother when she was very ill, so he had to be cared for by an aunt. And he was a, not a sad child, but a more protected child. And we all sheltered him. He was a very wonderful brother. He was married, or he had a son who died when he was a baby. So that was a son that we don't remember often. But he had another son who is alive today and um, doing very well. But Uncle Davy passed away two years ago. It was an opportunity to grow when I migrated from Trinidad in 1967. That was the year I graduated nursing school in Trinidad and came to New York. It was a very interesting experience to grow because it was from a girl who was not able to even travel three miles independently to go abroad to a new country and make a new life. Very interesting. The important things for kids to do is to focus on what they need, what they would like to do in life and stick to it. The important thing is commitment to be committed to whatever you in intend to do. Ram Saran Maharaj, I'm also called Jack. I was born January 28, 1949. So how I got Jack was my, as a child, I was called Jack Deo and during my early childhood, it evolved into Jack because it was more anglicized. Became a little more palatable for most of my friends who were not Indian. Pa and Ma. My father, I remember fondly always working. He worked every day I could remember he was at work. If it was a Sunday or a Monday or a Tuesday or a Thursday, he got up very early. He would take a bath in the uh, pipe we had outside. It wasn't a regular shower. It was a, a an extended uh, outdoor tap. And we, with no nozzle or anything, we'd just come down. We had it surrounded with uh, galvanized, take a shower in the yard. Then he would take some water in a bottle, in a, in a bucket or a container and go to um, offer it with flowers to the sun. He would do um, Surya Namaskar, as I remember, and he um, was very religious, but worked all the time. My mother worked all the time, but in the kitchen, not, in, not outside. She never worked outside the house, but she worked at the home 
uh, continuously. So I remember them as working hard with us all the time, doing something in the house, doing something around the house, doing something for the house, and taking care of us most of all. Uncle Davy, we, um, Auntie Cindy took us to uh, a cooking. A cooking is a, a night before a wedding. She had a, a friend, um, I think, I forgot her name, but we went to the cooking and they were not Hindus, they were Muslims. So there was um, lots of goat meat and they knew me as Jack, so they said, Jack, come on to the back. And um, I went to wash my hands to go back to the back. When I came back, Uncle Davy had eaten all the food. He, he went ahead and he um, sat down where I was supposed to sit and he uh, ate up my food. I didn't get any goat meat that night. I remember clearly it was um, November 28, 1968. It was cold. I came on the plane, I, I thought um, it was my third time on, a, on an airplane. They met me at the airport, uh, my sister and her friends, and um, I uh, remember it being very cold, very cold, and um, different. I had to take a bus, I never did that before. I took the train, I ate pizza. I, it was a totally different life for us. Sometimes lonely, but not lonely. It was just different. I never felt lonely. I felt um, challenged to do something um, that I was supposed to do. I was supposed to be there to work and to better myself, and which I did with the help of Auntie Cindy. She's the one who brought me. Auntie Cindy sent for me and I am forever grateful for her having brought us here. Advice for little kids. I don't know if I have any advice. Just be yourself. Enjoy being young because when you get old, that's what you're going to remember. The time, the good times you had when you were young. Listen to your parents. They know better. You always think you know better, but parents know best. And uh, stay healthy. My name is Laljit Maharaj. My birthday is February 19, 1953. My nickname is Lorette. And that's the meaning of love. And it also means my love. Mom and Pa, they are one of a kind. My mom was the most loving and caring person. My Pa was the most disciplined but playful person. There are so many memories of Uncle Davy. The thing I remember about Uncle Davy, so we were close friends, we were almost like twins. So my one memory of Davy is that we were once in a in a workplace where someone had said something to me that was not nice and I turned around and looked at him and when I look back at the person that said it he had like a swollen head here he was punched by Dave and by Arts that's a memory of that to me oh long story I left it as a teenager from Trinidad and um, I didn't go to the United States, New York, like everyone else. I went to a little island called St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. And I was a teenager sent 
to college, St. Thomas. Ooh, be good, do good. Be good, do good. Be good, do good. Be good, do good. Wow, my full name is Mohani Gora Maharaj Balru. And my date of birth is March 22nd, 1955. I was born on a Tuesday. Well, I don't know if I have a nickname, but I know my middle name is Gora, which I've always known. Until I was nine years old, I knew I only had one name. I thought it was Gora. But then when I was nine plus, when I was getting ready to sit that exam to leave elementary school to go to high school, only then I really saw my birth certificate and only then I knew I had a name, Mohini. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about Ma and Pa. So my Pa and my Ma, the best parents I, I think we had. They were the best parents. My father was very hardworking, which is far. He was very, very hardworking. My ma was equally hardworking. She worked very hard for everything that we have now. So I must say they were the best parents. I always told Uncle Davy and I had a special relationship, which I think we always had. It was like we knew each other in and out. Um, I could tell what he was going to say the next time he said something. We were very close. And as, a, as the only girl that came after Uncle Jack, Uncle Davy, and Uncle Lal, then I was born. So I was born um, right after three boys. So I was like a boy to them. I grew up doing all kinds of boy stuff being with the boys all the time um, and my first shoes, high heel shoes that I wore, Uncle Davy bought it for me. He took my measurement and he went to the store and he bought me my first high heel that I can wear to the first party that I had to go to and I was about maybe 13 or 14 years old then. So when me and my family migrated to United States, it was in 1992. I already had four children, my four daughters. So we migrated the last of all the Maharajas to come to the United States. So when we came here, it was a tough beginning because we had already built a home and our children were pretty grown up then when we moved to the United States. So it was a new country, it was a new beginning for us. Everything was difficult, it was culture-wise, we had to get used to the American life and um, it, it was a little tough, but, but we made it. We, made, we had hard choices to be made at that time. What advice I have for you little kids? Well, first of all, you must be true to yourself, I think. Being true to yourself, what you like, and also in the, deep down into everything that you want to do, you want to keep honesty as your best. Being honest, being trustworthy and kind to each other will take you many places. And or being trustworthy, being kind, being true, you will finish your education with those ideals because you will know that's what you want in the end. Oma Gunde Khan, July 18, 1957. My nickname was Stash 
because when I was a little girl, I ate everything inside and I was very heavy. And my brothers called me stush, which made me cry, but I learned to love it. Well, I would like to think that I'm Pa's favorite. My mom and I were not very close until I became an adult. And they taught us that education and religion was the most important thing in life. Wow. Uncle Davy was a very emotional man. He did have a drinking problem, but we all loved him throughout that. He was a very loving guy. He had the most beautiful voice that I could think about. It was very scary. I was 17 years old. I just finished high school and I thought that I did something wrong and my family sent me away. Listen to your parents get a good education and go with your gut feeling when it comes to religion because the truth is in every religion that you come into contact with. And be good, do good. And that's my advice for all of you. Lakshmi Maharaj Nau Supan and November 20th, 1959. Nickname is Lach. Just a short form of Lachmi. Actually, they called me Lachmin when I was little. And I only found out I was Lachmi when I was about 12 or 13, when I had to actually do common entrance exam. And that's, that's when I realized I was Lachmi. Ha and Ma, they were the rock of my life, to be honest with you. Ma was an amazing woman, super strong, and my father was my hero. Uncle Davy was much older than me. I would say we were about eight years apart. My fondest memory of him as a youth was watching him play cricket. This was a one-man cricket team. Him alone using a homemade bat and rocks or stones from the yard. He would throw the rocks in the air and bat it as far as he could. We were always warned to stay away far so we don't get hurt. While batting, he would become the commentator for the cricket match. <laughs> you would hear him comment on every stroke of the bat. And when he had a good hit, he would shout out, and it's down to the boundary for four. Gosh, he was really good at mimicking those commentators. It was a big move for me. I was 19 years old and Auntie Cindy was the one that actually pushed the trigger for me to come here. It was the best thing that happened to me. I would say Family means everything, and you should always watch out for each other. I think that's very, very important. Oh boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> my name is Nirmal Maharaj, but my official name is Dora Nath Maharaj. Everybody calls me Niri, and I was born on April 24th, 1961. Oh boy, I had a nickname that kind of like fell away. It, um, maybe I shouldn't say that nickname, Orange. But that was just a nickname for the name. So I'll skip that one. Because I was a little boy and I thought I had oranges. But anyhow, Niri came out of the word of the name Nirmal. So it kind of stuck in me, Niri. So it came from Nirmal. Oh, wow, well, yeah. So, let's start with my dad, right? So, when I was very young, I think 15, my dad passed. But um, during the age of when I could remember, 
to 15, my dad and I were very close. We got to get the opportunity to ride with him on the trucks and the cars that we had and actually go to work with him. And I see them work and I learned all my mechanical skill from my dad and his friends, obviously. Because my dad wasn't the best mechanic, but he was always among mechanics and, and transportation and trucking and stuff like that. I was very inquisitive as a little guy, so I learned a lot of mechanical stuff just by watching others. My mom was kind of like, when my dad passed, she became the dad, and I was still young, so I had to help her a lot around the house doing kind of manly chores at a young age, you know, but never too much for the kid, so um, she was awesome. Everything we learned spiritually and and morally was from mom. So that was good. We appreciated mom. Uncle Davy? Oh man, I have a lot of memories with Uncle Davy. I heard because when I was a little kid that I was his he had to take care of me, whether he liked it or not. So he couldn't get to go play and stuff like that. He had to take care of me. So anyhow, but as we get older, um, one of the memories we had together, um, some guy heckled my sister, Auntie Oma, and um, Uncle Dave, he had to be a big brother. And he came and he kind of like um, bullied the guy up and chased him away from the yard. So that was a memory as a big brother, Uncle Davey. For me, that was the toughest thing to do because I migrated when I was a teenager at 18 years old. And unfortunately, I lost all my high school friends, all my friends that I grew up with in the neighborhood. So I came here and um, it's like a transplant. I came here and, you know, we moved into big sister, big brother houses here. And we, I personally never got a lot of friends here in America. So I kind of cling to family really, very really close. And um, yeah, it was tough. So I kind of liked when I see kids have friends, you know, that, that's a good thing. Enjoy each other and be kind to each other and love each other because th everything we have today is just for a short time. So there's no big part of goal at the end of the rainbow like what they have in fairy tales. It's right in front of you right now. Kalauti Lolita Ramhit, date of birth, April 27, 1963. Actually, my nickname was Baby before my little sister came along. I ruined that for me. So then I became Lolly, which is short for Lolita. <laughs> but some people still call me Baby. My father was one of the most loving men you would ever find. Um, one of my fondest memories about him is um, the way he was always able to give everybody special attention. I remember Sunday mornings when we cooked food, he would play Indian music and dance with my mother, which all Indian people in those days didn't really, wasn't so, you know, outwardly emotional. So he would hug my mom and dance and spin her around and. That was really nice. I enjoyed those moments. Uncle Davy. Uncle Davy was very special. Um, he also called me Baby, by the way. Um, what I liked about him, he was very open. You could talk to him about anything you wanted. He wasn't judgmental in any way. Everything was okay with him. And that was one of my best you know, that was one of his best qualities, I think. Initially, when I first came to the United States, I had just finished high school, and I actually thought I was coming on vacation. And then to find out that I wasn't going back, I was a little bit disappointed. And I wasn't too happy with America at that point. I lived with Auntie Cindy, who tried her best to make me comfortable. But after a couple of years, I, had, I felt like I needed to go back. So when I became 20, going in 21, I went back to Trinidad and I thought I would stay there, but I had changed and I really didn't like it. 
So at 21, that's when I met my husband now, and we got we became engaged, and then we came to live by Uncle Jack, and then we got married. We came December 23rd, and unbeknownst to me, we had a wedding on January 6th, which was a surprise, but it lasted 38 years, so I guess some things was right about it. But yeah, but my experience in America, I, it grew on me. I didn't really want America for me, but now I can't think of any other place that I would live. I have lots of advice, but I don't know if anybody wants to take advice from me because I've made so many mistakes along the path. <laughs> but my advice is just to be true to yourself and don't ever second guess yourself. If you think you want to do something, just go for it. Purnima Avanti Maharaj, March 7, 1966. Vant, I believe is the nickname. So it's just shortened for Avanti. So. Hmm. So my memory with Pa is probably less because he died when I was 11. Um, he died the day before my birthday, right before my birthday. So that is something that sticks with me forever. Um, my memory with him, I'll deal with him first, is um, when I was about eight or nine, somewhere around there, um, I got pinned with a car that Auntie Goro was driving <laughs> um, against a wall in Trinidad where we were living and I couldn't walk so he had to rush me to the emergency room or hospital doctor and I remember him driving up sidewalks and stuff just to get me there and screaming and shouting and shouting at people <laughs> to say, say it in a nice way and um, so that's my really big memory of him other than that he he passed pretty quickly after that so. my mom oh my god I have so much memories of her um, what's one of my most she she was everything to me actually she lived with me I think more than the other kids so when she came off on vacation it was by me when she stayed it was mostly by me um, so we had a, a good bond um, there's so much to say about her I don't even know where to start <laughs> I don't know what memory to, to bring up with her I... so Uncle Davey came back in Trinidad and we actually created a bond I have to say I was in my teenage years and um, he came back to live with us it was just Ma him and I I don't know if Uncle Neri was home or not um, yeah Uncle I think Auntie Lodge was home but um he was driving an adventure and he crashed but that day he asked me to go for doubles and I said it was a Sunday morning and I said no nah, I think I'll stay home and he was like all right he'll go and he ended up crashing his car. Is this too traumatic? Sorry, <laughs> but he crashed his car. And um, we didn't know, the only time we saw him coming back was the wrecked car and him. And then he came home with all glass in his head. So we had to like, his head girlfriend at that time came and pulled out all the glass. But um, that was my biggest memory with him. <laughs> um, I have a lot more, but um, we, we bonded at that time with, with him and I, because I was, teenager and he was kind of like the big brother in the living home at that time so so when I migrated uh, I was 19 I had a boyfriend in Trinidad <laughs> I really didn't want to come so I remember it being the last almost the last three days before my visa was gonna expire and I which is your visa to come to the country and then I had to leave so um, I remember coming here and being very sad because I wanted to stay in Trinidad. Um, I didn't, at that time I was young and I didn't know of the advantage of be being here. And I miss my mom and I miss everyone who was home. So I was kind of sad for a while, as much as I didn't show it, I was very sad. Hmm, I would say to live your life and live it to the fullest be happy in whatever you do make sure the choices make you happy don't do it because someone else um, wants you to do it and you're unhappy like speak your mind say hey I'm uncomfortable I, I don't want to do this 
it doesn't make me happy you know I think mostly speak your mind but not hurt anyone with speaking your mind but yeah <laughs> in a nice way <laughs> Love. Uh, love. Happiness. Love. Trust. And love. Lifeline. I want to say joy. Um, joy is a good word. Um, togetherness. Yeah. And Truthfulness, which would be another good word. Forgiveness. Unity and love, one word, unity. Unity. <laughs> unity. <laughs>